I was trapped. I got this microphone bent right at me this time, dude. Look at it. It's going right down my throat. Good. That's the way it's supposed to go. <clears throat> clear my throat. Finally learning. Let, Let me clear me my throat. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. I got it. Just make sure. I want to acknowledge you. Don't you want me, baby? Acknowledge Roman. I still can't believe he has different music. I always just want to go, darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. <laughs> It's so funny that everybody thinks that he's going to win that belt, too. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually. I hadn't heard that. That's a good one. Mm. Why? They're just going to give him Roman. He's gonna... just going to go to Roman. Yeah. What's the point? Top guy, dude. You got to be that top guy. Lord have mercy. <coughs> it's the Geek Zip Podcast. Ryan Zip Christian coming at you from the fabulous Zip Cave. We're here. First time. Filming the yeah, live, dude. The, that they get to see. You got to film the uh, tour at some point. I do. A little I know. spin around 360. Well, I, I, I'm trying to clean up. You, you notice, get, Did you notice the new shelves? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thought so. There's a Batman mask. Yeah. Book. Yeah. I got the uh, <laughs> Dark Knight Returns book mask combo set. It was it was great at that little flea market place. It was for cheap. Cool. So I was happy about that. But yes, I will, I will definitely be doing the Zip Cave tour. Very soon. There's no doubt about it. Um, say you do like a 360 interactive video or something. Something like that. I was just going to walk around and kind of <laughs> show everything and then maybe do little little clips on, on little stuff with stories. I mean, not me. Well, I just meant like, you know, how you can click on a picture and like move around sometimes. Yeah. The, like, like when you're looking at a house. Like sure, you go yeah, the virtual, virtual tour. tour. <laughs> now you're talking, bro. I like it. What's been going on, dude? What have you been playing, doing, watching? I don't know, man. I was trying to think on the way over here. Yeah. But th- this week has flown by since it has that flown. wrestling car. Yeah, we had a lot of a lot of stuff going on last weekend. Of course, I want to thank, once again, Time Warp of Ashland and all the fa- fine sponsors of Bluegrass WrestleCon Bluegrass, 4. Yeah, Bluegrass. Our video uh, coverage and our show is actually from Bluegrass WrestleCon, Wrestling Con. And you can check that out at our Podomatic page. Or YouTube. I like watching Or on YouTube, YouTube, yeah. I did a Star Spangled kind of background. Yeah, it was a little distracting. It was a I little thought about that. I was I like, like, maybe he could slow down the spinning a little bit. That might be a bit much. <laughs> you know, I feel like that's a bit much. Um, that our extravaganza is okay. I'm a perfectionist. I'm sorry. Getting that camera angle. I've got to get the angle right. There get we go. Angle. See, now I have enough what they call headroom, Christian. Well, my camera should have zoomed in, but we don't know how to do that yet. Well, I feel like you probably could. You just didn't work on it long enough. You kind of gave up. I you're said we don't, that way. we don't know how to do it yet. I don't, I'm not Oh, so you're, you're going to do it. At some point, we'll figure it out. Yeah. But okay. today, I got I, I got to go see that movie at 245. That's right. You're going to go see Guardians 3, right? Correct. Uh, how are you feeling about it? I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, they, they're they're not talking good things. Are you sure? I heard it was pretty good. I heard it was better than I mean, you know, at least the re, the reaction so far, the money it's brought in has been, you know, well, not too disappointing. Yeah. So it's not exactly being hit by the same quote unquote superhero fatigue, you know. True, true, and I think I think that was James Gunn's plan. I think that's why those movies have been so successful. And it kind of focuses on Rocket, dude. Everybody loves Rocket. Everybody loves Rocket. You're right about that, no doubt. Um, what have I been doing? I, uh, of course have still been playing Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. I haven't strayed from that very much. Um, New I want, Zelda came out yesterday. I know. And but the it's reviews getting tens and tens of ten getting, everywhere. Are, yeah. The reviews Best game are, of the year. Century, uh, ever. ever. Yeah. Like since Ocarina. And I'm just like, oh my God. I didn't play. I haven't played Zelda since Ocarina probably. Me neither. <laughs> I, well, no, I tell you, I, I think I did play Maybe that Breath bit, of the Wind. That's that was the one before the this latest one, the Breath one, yeah. of the Wild on Switch. On, on Breath of the Wild. Uh, it's yeah. supposed to be good. I haven't. But that was that fun. One. Yeah, it's but I mean, to be really good. I don't know when you play Xbox and PlayStation so much with that controller, it's hard to play that fucking Switch. <laughs> like I guess I guess they do have like the controller. Yeah, you got to get that pro you know, controller. Yeah, the pro controller that might might be a little bit better. And I'm always doing it on the screen. Well, one, to, you know, the one thing that is kind of cool about the Joy Cons is. When you play them like separately and not like in the controller thing, and then you, it's so weird playing with your arms like spread. Yeah, out. yeah. I mean, but it's cool. I like being able to do that. Like when my dog's in the way. I mean, and I can't put my hands together like that. Yeah, on the joystick. I can go like this and play. 
Well, that's that's <laughs> you're very you're very coordinated when it comes to a controller. I'll, I'll say true. that. So I don't know if I could do that. I think I'd just tell the dog to move. <laughs> You'd be like, what is this? I can't. I need to see it. <laughs> your dogs are old. Um, that's that's cool. What have I been watching? Uh, I've been, I've just been really watching movies. I watched man. something really good. What'd you watch? We'll get into it later. Okay. Um, it's gonna make you mad that I saw it. Did you watch Evil Dead Rises? I sure did. You son of a bitch. Oh, I was actually going to call you and be like, hey, you want to come over Friday night and watch that together so we can talk about it on the show? It's on iTunes. 25 bucks. I know bucks. it's on iTunes. I, it's on Voodoo. Bucks, I've baby. seen the fucking price and I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. Oh, it was so worth it. <sighs> Damn you. <laughs> Damn you. I knew you'd do that. I knew as soon as I saw it available on digital, I was like, "Well, Christian's already watched." Yep. It. As soon as I saw that it was available, I was like, <laughs> I was like "Oh, that's available." Christian's now? already that's watched mine. it, so that's done. Well, God damn it! Now I'm going to have to figure out a way to get over to your you house. Just, to watch. Yeah, log into my Apple account or something. God, that'd be so. That's, that's so time consuming. I don't know if I want to deal with that. But anyway, that's cool. How was it? Let's. let's I mean, just not. Don't talk about plot. It was, or it was awesome, dude. I mean, they're saying it's like. Not only has it now grossed, which I have in a story, yeah. um, but they're saying it's the best film in the franchise. And it was terrifying, too, dude. And I, it goes even past Bruce Campbell's work. It's not, you know, we th- we think of Evil Dead as being goofy yeah. a lot. Campy. It's not. It's yeah. not at all. Well, I think Maybe I th- like... I think that's what they tried to accomplish with the wet one. Remember? I, like, yeah. I, I, you know, I don't remember much about work. that one, right. but... But yeah, I'd say it's probably like five five percent goofy, maybe maybe less than that, dude. Like, cause it's just straight horror. Dude, it looks creepy as fuck. I mean, from what I've seen of it, the pictures of that mom and shit. Yeah, her man. face is so angular; it's scary. <laughs> she does have weird face. It's just like they they're finding these actors and actresses that just have these weird faces, like that chick from Smile. She's got a great uh, demonic voice too, and she's like, "Mommy's with the maggots now." Oh God, gosh, a dead by dawn. Is that, is that, there's, a lot, that? there's a lot of Dead by Dawn. Dead by Dawn. That is the overall theme of the series. Well, that's awesome. That is, by the way, available on digital um, there wherever is, you get your I digital. watched a video about like 10 things you might have missed in it, too. Yeah. And apparently Bruce Campbell has a cameo. Is that right? I, I didn't notice it when is I watched it. Is the car in it? I don't know. Oh. I, if that car's in it, <laughs> I'm going to lose my shit. It probably I mean, that, is. I there's mean, a parking garage and everything. But apparently Bruce Campbell does a voice when they're like listening to the tape or something, and the, they're like these priests talking about the book, and somebody's like, "It's the Book of the Dead. Destroy it. it we got to destroy it." That's Bruce Campbell talking. Mm. I would not. I didn't pay attention to it, so I was mm. like, "Well, I, now I know. Yeah. I have to, I'll have to listen and watch for that. it again." Um, no, it's funny. Kush saw it. She knows, of course, how much I want to see it, and she saw it on Voodoo, and she's like, "Oh shit!" She's like, "How much is it?" I'm like, "It's twenty six dollars." <laughs> And she was like, that's to own it? And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to rent it for 20 bucks." Yeah, jeez. It's like, yeah. why the fuck would you pay that. the additional $6 <laughs> and own it? Um, so, yeah, that is available. And I'm going to, oh, fuck. I'm either going to have to find it online or I'm going to have to come over and watch it at your house or something. For sure. Go to the um, th- you still go to the theater, too? Christian, when you came in the cave, yeah, I can I can still go to the theater. That's a good point. When you came in the cave, you, you caught me watching some Steven Seagal. Um, I have been in a massive Steven Seagal mood all week long. I, I thought it was Major League. I was way off. Well, it's a, it was a football scene. <laughs> so there was a sporting event on a field. I guess that, that in your mind, equates to Major League. Well, I, I heard a lot of African Americans <laughs> talking, too. So I don't know what that means, and I don't want to know. Um, well, I didn't know there were so many Jamaicans <laughs> in the Steven Seagal movie. Well, it's that one marked for death. It's uh, with Screwface. Uh, it's, yeah, that's the name of the villain, the Screwface. Yeah, it looked pretty intense, man. There was a lot of ethnical characters. <laughs> Keith David and these, uh, like I said, Jamaicans, oh, man. very ethnic. I have just... And uh, I don't even know what ethnicity Steven Seagal is. <laughs> I don't either. I mean, and I've never known, honestly. I think it changes. It does change. <laughs> it does change depending on, like, the century. How he's the feeling decade. that day, how he yeah. wakes up. In the 80s, he was Italian. In the 90s, he was, like, a fucking Indian. And then <laughs> He's the Dalai Lama, dude. He's, like, the chosen one. Oh, shit. Um, 
Well, should we get into the regular show? I guess so. We do have a lot of content to get to, even though I love just bullshitting. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone who picked up a card. Uh, we did have some new followers join us this week, so yeah. that means that some people from the con are now on board. We're well, we were right you. beside Kurt Angle. I we mean. were beside the uh, Olympic icon. We shook his hand. It was pretty cool. Um, so thank you for that. But we need more. Um, always yeah. trying to make the show better. You can help us out by going online to podomatic.com. P-O-D-O-M-A-T-I-C.com. Share the links. Tell us what you think. Forward slash GeekZip Podcast. All one word. On there you'll see our social media links. As Christian mentioned, want you to share the show. And then we also have our Patreon link. Still looking for that show sponsor. You can and email I, me directly to geekzippodcast at gmail.com. This show is brought to you by the Hives. Yes. Oh, man. If <laughs> you are song. a Hives fan or a rock, rock fan, fan yeah. um, check out the Hives' new song, Bogus Operandi, with the video. I think it's important that you watch the video. That too. video is awesome. I'm glad um, you saw the video. I got chills when they suited it up. It's funny when you're, yeah, it does. When they suited up, I got chills. And I they're was in like, the graves shit. rocking out. Yeah. Yeah. I just, it's just a really it's good song. It's funny how you're like, is it from the soundtrack? <laughs> I did. I was like, is that from the movie? Yeah. It looks <laughs> like excited. it should be. It could have been. It easily could have been. Sure. But again, see, I had to explain this to Elena, see, because she didn't get the, she didn't get it either. Um, <laughs> She, she not like, seen any of them. Well, no, she, she, yeah, she was like, "Is it the evil? Is it in the Evil Dead movie?" And I was like, "I don't know, honey. I haven't seen. It. <laughs> Probably not." And she said, "Is it from another Evil Dead movie?" I said, "No, honey. It's the theme of Evil Dead. It's just the theme. That's all." She's like, "So Bruce Campbell's in it?" <laughs> so yeah, bless her heart. I love Kush. Um, kind of cabin in the woods. Even. Yeah, yeah, cabin in the woods kind of deal. Um, Anyway, uh, be sure to support us if you can. Patreon, new content coming this week. We're going to do some more Geeking Out episodes where we're going to discuss Batman the Animated Series. Also going to um, talk about some comic books that are out now. Uh, we did get a chance to read Batman 900. I'd really like to do a review on that one because that, that was cool. a really good one. Um, I thought then, about doing one for Evil Dead. <laughs> you should have. Uh, have, yes. So we got more Patreon content coming your way as well. All right, let's get into the show. First of all, we take care of the sad news first for RIPs. Linda Lewis. This is a famous backing singer in the 70s. She performed with David Bowie, performed with Cat Stevens, uh, uh, Rod Stewart, and many, many more. Um, as far as I know, we're not related, despite our last I names. thought you were, so that's why I included the story. Well, I mean, I do have a beautiful voice like she uh, does. I, well, I wouldn't know. <laughs> uh, she died uh, last Wednesday at the age of 72. News was confirmed by her sister, D. Lewis Clay. And uh, again, she was just uh, performed with so many iconic um, um, artists. musicians and artists. Yes, thank you, Christian. Sorry. Um but it is unfortunate that Linda passed, but she did live an incredible career as a backup singer for some of the best acts in the world. She also released some of her own solo stuff as well. Our sincere condolences to her family and her fans. Would you like to be the singer or the backup? Or does it really depends matter? on for who? Oh, it depends on what it is. Yeah, if I'm if I'm singing backup on like. I want to sing backup on some MAGA rap, dude. I've been watching MAGA rap. What in the fuck is MAGA rap? It's Patriot music for Patriots. Is it got the guy screaming on the mountains? <laughs> that's that's the only the big country guy. Yeah, that's... yeah. Whenever I think of MAGA, that's what I think of. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking. Big you country, know? yeah. God damn, that was funny. I don't think that has anything to do with MAGA. You're just <laughs> associating cowboys with MAGA. <laughs> I don't know why. Every time I fucking see MAGA, I think of that guy screaming on the mountain. Dude, there's so many memes with that guy. Too. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay, big, big news, folks. Did you see this, Christian? Yeah, I don't get it because it says, you know, we have all these other stories about, oh, look who's oh, in we, it. We don't know look who's, who's in it. How do we not know who's in it when we have a release date? Well, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> I, I know you're referring to that story that we pulled up very quickly last week. Um, and well, you got another one on here too about uh, Defoe. Yep, yep. 
I think they're adding to it. Be- okay, first of all, we we got to remember there are people that are just listening. Yeah. <laughs> Beetlejuice Two is going to release September sixth of twenty twenty four with Tim Burton directing, with Michael Keaton starring as the title role, with Jenna Ortega joining the cast, Danny Elfman composing the film score, Justin Thoreau is in the cast. Willem Dafoe has been added to the cast, and it is now official. We are going to get Beetlejuice Part 2. Christian, your thoughts? Willem Dafoe's character sounds cool. He's a cop in the afterlife, yeah. apparently, like a, like a, which which fits him perfectly. I, I can't wait to see that performance. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> it's going to be like Boondock gonna, Saints. Dude. It's going to be, I mean, yeah, it's just going to be over the top crazy. Why don't a writer back on board as well as Lydia Dietz? We don't know about that yet. Um. About when Winona. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and go out on the <laughs> limb and say that she's going to do it. Uh, I really can't see her not doing it. I don't know why she wouldn't. But that is just crazy. It's almost like Michael Keaton has reached this kind of renaissance in his career where next he's up realizing. is going to be. <laughs> what's next up? Mr. Mom 2. I was going to say Multiplicity I 2. I not you were going to say. But I thought of a better one. There aren't one. many Michael Keaton movies that we were allowed to watch when we were kids. <laughs> but anyway, because he did a lot of fucking like Pacific Heights and One Good Cop and all this, all these heavy dramas that you know kids one weren't really cop. into. One Good Cop. But I'm super excited for this. It's kind of out of nowhere. I don't know where the plot will go. Um, you know, with the events of the last Oh, yeah, one. we also have the Monica Bellucci. Yes, Monica Bellucci is going to play Beetlejuice's wife oh. in the film. Um, if you don't know who she is, and I don't know why you don't, she's the chick from The Matrix. She's been in Bram Stoker's Dracula. She was also in uh, the James Bond film uh, Spectre. Um, as a Bond girl, she is gorgeous. International sex pot. Yes. I, I mean, and she's a great actress, too. I mean, we don't want to take that away. Yeah, she's in that but, real messed up movie, too. Uh, Michael Keaton gets a good wife with him uh, <laughs> in the Beetlejuice sequel. So I envy him just a little bit. And yeah, well, like, uh, he needs somebody after Winona or wouldn't do it. Remember, yeah, she right? wouldn't marry him. Yeah. So she, he had to find something. I thought he was going to get with the girl that That's was solid in half. half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, I thought she just liked him. When no, dude, flirting. she likes that little head guy. <laughs> you know what he does with that little would... head? <laughs> Gets right up in that. <laughs> oh, I hope kids never. I, I can't believe I let my kids listen to the show. Um, as Chris had mentioned, Willem Dafoe has joined the cast. I love his picture. Jeez, I mean. yeah. <laughs> Here we see Willem Dafoe. Looks like he's eyeing his dinner or something. Or <laughs> Dude, he was so great in that Lighthouse movie. I mean, just this guy falls into roles like people fall into a swimming pool. I mean, it's so crazy how he puts everything behind everything he does. He's and a, that inside movie he's in is supposed to be pretty crazy. What's what's that? I think he's like trapped. Is he in Frankenstein? A, no, it's like he's trapped in a penthouse or something. Ooh, interesting. I'll have to check that out. I do know that he's he's starring in a in a upcoming horror Frankenstein. Well, I don't know if it's it, it's a reimagining of the Frankenstein story. You know, and we he need plays a, the monster. We need a good Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. That boy, don't one. we? We haven't had one since Malkovich in in the early nineties. Did that. Um, Mary Riley movie. Mm-hmm. That was that was the last time I saw Jekyll and Hyde. I think. Um, so excited for <laughs> He'd be a good Mister Hyde with that face right there. That one right there, he would. Yeah, no shit. Uh, Willem Dafoe. I mean, he's just he's just a guy that I think just has he can fun. Play, I mean, he could play both. So he easily. could, yeah, very easily. So I mean, congratulations to everybody. And uh, we look for, forward to Beetlejuice 2 where we bring you every update that we have on it, whether that be filming, casting, shots, whatever may happen. But again, September 2024 is when we'll see the highly anticipated sequel. With Jenna Ortega. I hate to bring you down, Christian, but uh, we oh, sure have a do. story here that uh, kind of shocked people uh, last week. Turns out Dolph Lundgren, the iconic action star known the world over for his roles in Rocky IV and The Expendables, revealed that he's been battling cancer for the past eight years. It's a big villain. Man, that is terrible. Um, You know, this is a situation where, you know, nobody knew about it. Um, 
but he had been diagnosed with lung cancer in 2015 and he just didn't really talk about it. And during that time, he's made all these movies. Well, um, I think it said it went into remission and then returned with a vengeance. Right. And then right. he got a second opinion about it and they were able to shrink the tumors down. Yes. Yeah, second, the second opinion was essential. Um, you know, he also said his steroid use might have caused it. I don't know. He did I don't mention know the that role he, of steroids and well, there was a, there was an interview that he did where he talked about his time on Rocky Four. Yeah, and and apparently when Sly originally came to him with the role, um, he wanted him to put on weight, and so he started bodybuilding with Sly. Well, everybody knows fucking Sly was juicing. Um, so yeah, that could be an effect. I don't know how, how it would affect the lungs though. I don't know. Like how can, you know, yeah, how the body, how, I don't know how chemicals, I don't know. Fuck. I, cells you know, work. I'm not, I'm not, you're in the medical field. So I thought maybe you might know, but. I'm a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> All our best to Dolph. Um, luckily things are looking very positive about his condition. He must break this cancer. Yes. And I'm sure he will, but, uh, we're pulling for you, buddy. And, uh, Wish you all the best. Did you hear about Jamie Foxx, This Christian? is an interesting what story. What the fuck is going on? So I get this tweet last week, or maybe it was even the week before that, about that Jamie Foxx has been hospitalized, but they won't say why. Right? It's like, it's like did he OD? Did he fucking get shot? Did he uh, fucking, what, what happened? Mm-hmm. It, no, no one knows. No one. They're not making it public. I don't know why that is. I don't know what the point of that is. Um, I guess you can't hide the fact that he's in a hospital. Well, have so. you have you heard the latest now? No, I, I have not heard the latest. What's the latest? His daughter on Instagram posted that he's been out of the hospital for weeks and has just played pickleball. Meanwhile, we have a story here that says yes. that tell his family members to prepare for the worst. Yes. What the fuck is going she on? She saw that there? and then responded with this on Instagram today. So it's like, well, who am I supposed to? Yeah. Uh, what? Well, what a weird situation. But I mean, why? Why? Why not can't we? Why can't we, we just hear from Jamie Foxx? I mean, not to say that I, I don't want to say that no one cares, but I mean, my life does not revolve around what's happening with Jamie fucking Fox. So well, some people's do though. Their money, the mm-hmm. money. You know, we got. We can't just let them die. That's unfortunate. <laughs> If it dies, he dies. Um, he's gonna he's gonna take my money away, dude. The bottom line is, is we really don't know what's going on here. We're getting we're getting stories almost day by day. Um, sometimes the news is like on this story that I have pulled up that the it, the doctors have told his family to prepare for the worst. Sometimes it's he's fine. He's playing pickleball. So I don't know yeah, what that's the what fuck. I didn't give. It's like he's he's been out of the hospital for weeks. We'll keep you apprised of what. Ja- I mean, I, obviously like, Jamie is he? obviously Jamie is very important to the geek community. And he played Electro, did you know Django Unchained? Was in a lot of iconic films. La hilarious. Fonda. Was that her? Lawanda? Lawanda. Lawanda. Yeah, Lafonda was from Napoleon Dynamite. Lafonda. <laughs> So, uh, if Jamie is, you know, in some kind of medical condition, we wish him all the best. If not, I wish he'd let everybody know so we can stop worrying (laughs) about him. Anyway, Disney Plus cannot sit still. You know, it's like, it's like a kid. It's like, you're like, you're doing fine and just sit there and shut up and do your thing. Mm. But they can't do that. So, turns out at the end of the year, they're going to be merging with Hulu. I wonder how that's going to work because, like, uh, I, I have Disney Plus but not Hulu. Then I would imagine your price is going to go up. That would be my first guess. And so. also, like, some people have Hulu with ads, and we have Disney Plus without ads. Right. <laughs> I think. I, do they again, have a I Disney think, Plus with ads? Well, option? they're obviously going to have to have a new pricing tier system. Yeah, and I'm sure that'll come into play. You know, whether you, you mean know, they're not just going to keep the prices the same and just give <laughs> us more for our money? Of course not. That'll never happen. Um, I, you know, I kind of get this play. You're going to get, you know, double the users to the app, and you're not going to split your audience as much. So I kind of understand from that aspect why they're doing it. But at the same time, you're talking about merging a app that has a lot of adult-related, adult-themed material on it with Disney, and that's just not like them. 
Um, they it's, usually keep their fucking distance from anything controversial. Well, it's like ever since Disney Plus got The Simpsons, you know, it's just been odd. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. It's like point. growing up, you know, I wasn't allowed True. to watch The Simpsons. Yeah, and now and it's, on, it's Disney. on Disney. Well, you know, I mean, cultures change, and you know what's what's considered, you know, culturally acceptable changes. Um, and I'm sure that has a lot to do with it, but I mean, man, yeah, it's just, you know, of you course, know. you know, and this story does cover that. Uh, you and know. it also mentions how Disney doesn't have a lot of new properties coming out. True. Right. So, so it could be a, a situation where they're trying to fill their content. Like they have like, one show at a time, right. one episode a week. And don't forget, you know, they're starting to introduce more rated R content in the Marvel world as well. You got Deadpool and Logan and, uh, the Netflix know, series, the yeah, defenders and defender, punisher yeah, all that stuff and i mean you're going to have to get into that territory at some point and you know apparently they have now? an f-bomb in the guardians that's movie. what i heard yeah yeah chris pratt was talking about it on that interview i got coming up here later but um again this app is supposed to merge with hulu disney plus supposed to merge at the end of this year keep you apprised of what's going on with that situation they're all just going to merge back into cable aren't they <laughs> hopefully <laughs> Then maybe I'll finally get to watch something. Um, yeah, right. You watch too much. I watch movies. That's my problem. Oh, here's a, one of our, another casualty. Let's for get the, into the writer's strike the happening writer's in strike. Hollywood, California. Um, for those that don't know, and I don't know how you don't know, but the WGA, the Writers Guild of America, union members are on strike because they are not receiving fair wages. Um, you know, there's been a lot of speculation as to why this is streaming. Has been brought up a lot. and They're just not getting paid enough. Well, and, you know, there was also some question about creator um, information being exchanged between creators and the streaming companies. And using uh, AI to yeah, come up with exa- the ideas exactly, and write you know, the scripts. Or, you know, writers that are writing this stuff and not knowing that it's making millions of dollars while they're <laughs> trying to struggle to eat. <laughs> Um, so, uh, you know, obviously this show stands in solidarity with the writers. I mean, that's, you, you got to pay people a living fucking wage. I don't know what's wrong with this country when you think that you can't pay people, especially the ones that make you so much fucking money. You already see the effects. I mean, and we've seen this, it's, it's, this isn't the first time this shit's happened that the writers have gone on strike. Um, you know, it's just sad they have to do it every few years, you know, to get their message across. And, um, you know, it, it's fucked up a lot of shit, a lot of shit that we enjoy. Uh, Daredevil Born Again. The filming has been suspended on that. Because um, there was a picket line and the people yeah, weren't going to cross it. Silver Cup East Studios, uh, you know, the local Teamsters there for the WGA, they started a picket line, which is their God-given American right, and I don't blame them for doing it. Um, some shows are shutting down on their own, yeah. you know, in protest of, of the unfair advantage that these major studios have over the creators of this content that we know and love and that we actually sit here and talk about each week. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, it's just created a whole shit show. And Daredevil Born Again is not the only show that got hit by the strike. The new Stranger Things season is now paused because the writers are fighting for fair wages. Yeah, I think Um, they were the ones that said the writing doesn't stop after the script's finished. That's right. That's right. And, and, And think about that. That's a great statement. Think about what he just said. You know, it doesn't stop there. They're not done after they finish a script. they got to keep going. You know, and it's like they never rest. They never get a break. It's a it's a nine to five job just like anybody else. And like a nine to five job just like anybody else, you gotta fucking pay your people. Oh man. Just just really gets me going because of yeah, of, it's, of it's, it's gonna suck having stranger oh, things waiting more on that. Oh man, waiting on everything, you know? But I am willing to wait. Yeah, yeah. Because it's bullshit. Uh anyway. Uh, we'll keep you apprised of what's going on with the writer's strike if it gets settled. I assume it's going to get settled soon because the studios are finally starting to see what this causes and the problems this creates when you don't pay fucking people. So hopefully it'll be uh, solved real soon. Hopefully. I'm worried they have a backlog of stuff they've already got ready to go. See, that's what I'm thinking. That's, that's, that's my that's my fear. Um 
In other news, maybe not related so much to the writer's strike, the show The Winchesters uh, was canceled at the CW. Um, now the show runner Jensen Ackles of Supernatural has launched a campaign to hashtag Save the Winchesters. Yeah, he's trying to get all the Supernatural fans to That's get, right. get on board. I guess his hope is to find it a new home other than the CW. Um, you know, this was a situation where you can tell that, that Jensen has more story to tell. Well, I heard that the yeah. it's there's a plot twist spoiler that uh, it's not a prequel at all. It's like Dean is... This, this is happening inside of heaven when Dean's in heaven watching this stuff or something. Oh, wow. That changes everything, yeah. Um, you know, no one denies the amount of fandom that Supernatural has. I mean, it has a rabid following. I was of, getting ready to watch it now that it's on HBO Max. I just I haven't had a chance I actually passed to. it on Netflix um, this morning, and I was like, you know, I could start watching that and just be happy. I thought about watching Justice League on Netflix. Justice League is now on Netflix along with Unlimited as well. I meant yeah, the cartoon, yeah. There's two. Justice the League 2003 Justice League. one, maybe? That sounds right for Justice League Unlimited, yeah. Justice two, League was sooner than that. Two seasons? Of Justice League. Of Unlimited, yes. Unlimited. Yes, that's correct. That's what I was going to watch. Is that better? Right. Unlimited has more characters. So with Justice League, you you only see Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Hawk Girl, Green Lantern, and Martian Manhunter. Um, there are some cameo appearances from some other characters and villains. But Justice League Unlimited is more like the Super Friends show where you have Green Arrow, Supergirl, Vigilante. Um, they got that new DC animated movie on HBO Max. Is it really? Which one? The Doom That Came to Gotham? No, the one with uh, Supergirl going to like the 31st century. Oh, yeah. The, the, uh, the animation looks cool on it, though. Right, right. Keep talking, keep talking. I, I started it, but I haven't finished watching it yet. Supergirl or, or other heroes? I haven't watched in it. I, yeah, well, I think there's like 31st century people. Oh, okay, so like Brainiac 5 and all that? Yeah, yeah, I saw him there with them. They did uh, They did some episodes um, in Justice League Unlimited. Um, Sorry, I don't have anything to say. No, it's fine. I'll, I'll cut this out. Um, cut they did do some stuff in Justice League Unlimited uh, that sent her to the 31st century. That's how I know that. Yeah, it sounded like the movie was like she doesn't like she gets tired of being here and wants to go somewhere else. Well, I mean, she gets she gets tired of living mm. in. Colo Are you making that noise? Yeah, well, no. she's just tired of. No. <laughs> what? I was like, what's that noise? <laughs> I'm tired of it. I just don't want to do anything. Well, you know, like I said, the the episode. I, I didn't really like the stuff when she went to the future, but the reason she did that is because she got tired of living in Superman's shadow. That's right. Fuck him. <laughs> I don't know if that was her attitude or not. But. Well, it probably was. You know how teens are. <coughs> you got a few of them. <laughs> I got. A, I got one. Oh, I was watching Drax and Guardians 2, dude. He's so funny. You love that Batista. Bitch, he's the... <coughs> Again, if you would like to help the Winchesters find a new home, you can use hashtags like SPN Family and hashtag Save the Winchesters. Have you ever watched... Did you watch the Winchesters? I watched the first episode. Any good? I mean, it... Potential? It, it had potential, yeah. It wasn't... <laughs> I made it through the whole episode. Well, that's good. Better than not. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I would have done it with I this I called one. this one, didn't I? True Lies, the show that was based off the Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jamie Lee Curtis film from the mid-90s, is canceled after one season. Aw. Again, showing my point that you cannot make shit that was back in the day and make it now and make it relevant. You can't do it. I didn't have Arnold in it. Maybe if it had Arnold in it. There's a whole list of reasons why it doesn't work. Number one, James Cameron. You don't have him. I think Arnold is the big... No, no, no. 
I agree. <laughs> I totally agree. And it's so funny that he's doing that food bar show. Yeah. Uh, that's what I think is hilarious. It might not it. get canceled. It's almost like a kick in the face. It looks know? funny. I watched it. It looks hilarious. With yeah. Puppets. Yeah, it looks funny. Um, Did you see the part with puppets? No, I yeah, haven't there's seen There's an any Arnold clips puppet, dude. They're like. They're in a oh therapy session where the daughter has an Arnold puppet and, oh and Arnold has a Does it a look girl. like him? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm going to have to check it out. What's it on? Netflix? I don't think it's out yet, but that preview is on YouTube. Previews on YouTube, yeah. When is it? It, it comes out June something. Soon. Soon. Again, it, it, it's just, it, it's another fucking example of, you, you know... Remaking RoboCop, remaking Point Break, remaking fucking Roadhouse, remaking these movies. People that are fans of the original are not going to attach themselves to it. Because it's a remake. That's your first problem. Your second problem is you got to figure, you got to realize what movie you're remaking. Okay, and I really had a problem with this, as Christian knows, with films like Total Recall and RoboCop that were directed by Paul Verhoeven. He has a very specific style of film work that he does, and no one else can do it. I mean, it's really like they're pissing in his mouth. I mean, it's, it's shitty, and I don't like it. And this is just another fucking example of it, uh, of, of them trying to... Oh, this made money. So, we'll make more money. We'll just redo it with younger people. No, no, no. It's it was, easier than starting something new. It was the fucking time, and it was the fucking place. You got to remember, around this time, there wasn't really a James Bond franchise thing going on. There wasn't a bunch of spy shit happening, right? There weren't a bunch of Marvel superheroes. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was Arnold. And, and, he just, and he's coming off of fucking T2. Right? So it's like dumb ass shit. I don't understand why they can't just make original shit. But anyway, True Lies canceled. Good riddance. I guess they're going to wrap up their first season with the season finale. Uh, there was a fucking date in here. I don't know when it is. Um, uh, soon. Um, June. 13 episode. Just waste of time and money that I kind of called from day one. Superman and Lois season four is now in doubt. I know we said that uh, James now, Gunn said it could go on, but CW said maybe right, not. CW said ah. so. The problem is, is that um, of course we mentioned the Winchesters has been canceled. The prequel to the Walker Texas Ranger show Walker Independence was canceled, and the reboot of the Kung Fu series. Is that another one that can only be done in a certain time and place? I think Kung so, Fu? yeah. Kung <laughs> Fu. I mean, again, back then, Kung Fu wasn't fucking known. So, yeah, it's going to make a difference. The issue is, is that Superman and Lois, along with Gotham Knights and some show called All-American <laughs> Homecoming. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what is that? I don't know. Um, they just haven't heard yet what their fate is going to be, whether they will be canceled or not. Now, it's possible they won't be. It's as though none are expected to continue at this time. I mean, CW is trimming the fat. I think they finally realized that, you well, know. Well, it's probably Zaslav. <laughs> you love blaming Zaslav for I everything. I did. Well, now I found out he's working for, I don't even want to get into it. Never mind. Well, I don't even want to get into it either. Who's he working for? John Malone. <laughs> Who's John Malone? Billionaires. Also, he's on the board. It's, of, a, it's a conspiracy. He's on the board of Fox uh, and CNN now. That's why CNN had that town hall. So it's a conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. They're leaning into the MAGA now. <laughs> really got to get you a political podcast for yourself, buddy. Really got to work on that. I'm going to work on that for you. I am. I'm going I'm to make that happen. Um, I mean, every, oh, th this show has a lot of fans. It has a lot of fans. Not I'm not me. Uh, yeah, I'm not particularly a fan, but it does have a following because it does kind of carry on that Christopher Reeve, Brandon Routhy kind of Superman character line, um, and they get it right a lot. I'm not going to deny that at all. Well, I just don't like the Lois actress, remember? Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, she's not very good. Julia um, Binoche or whatever. But Tyler does a good job. You know, unfortunately, he's been in a bunch of shit where he plays a pussy. <laughs> so, you know, looking at him as Superman was hard at first, but he does a really good job. 
We'll keep you updated on the uh, fates of both Superman and Lois and the latest Gotham Night show, which I don't think will succeed either. How about this, Christian? What? An iconic, iconic television program from the generation where Christian and I come from, MTV News, has officially shut down. I thought it shut down in the 90s. That's what I thought, too. I don't know what the fuck. I, I, I had to actually look into this a little bit oh, and yeah. figure out what the hell they were talking Apparently. I saw Kurt Loder twi- twinding on Twitter, and I thought he died. I was like, oh, no, that's too bad. I don't think he died yet. Uh, I, I know. know that's I know. why it was trending, because of the MTV News stuff. <laughs> it's not because he died. I don't think he died yet. He'd uh, be in our RIPs, hopefully. Well, I, I would put him in there. Good. He'd definitely be in there. Um, you know, the kids, there was a time when there was no internet, and the only way to find out information about uh, music was to watch uh, news programs. There weren't many that were prime time. Wasn't it like 10 minutes after the hour, every hour or something? Yes, something like that. Um, it was updates on um, it's like a little commercial happening right in the music world of rock, of rap, of pop. Uh, it was just a really iconic kind of sh- kind of programming and i guess they were continuing it online they'd use that little music from the stp what music the stone temple pilots the you hear it first oh yeah 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 for sure and of course gave us people like kurt loader who became you know the voice of a generation like suchin pak a lot of uh, MTV news um, journalists that we saw over the years. But Paramount has laid off a bunch of people, and apparently that was affected. So after 36 years, MTV news is officially shut down. In the bottom of this, it had a story about uh, Paramount's going to make a Dungeons & Dragons series based off that movie. I thought that sounded cool. Is that movie successful? I don't know, but I hear it's good. Really? I hear it's worth seeing. Okay. Because I, I didn't think it would be successful. Yeah, I don't know if it's successful, but I know it's a good movie. Let me tell you what's going to be successful. The Meg to the Trench. Did you even know this was happening? Trench. I had no idea this was happening. No. I no clue. Not until we talked about it, I think. Did we talk about it? I think you had a picture of the island. Remember we saw like an island? Oh, No. <laughs> but anyway the island in the trailer where the dinosaur gets eaten i think we saw a still of the island oh and it was like the first image from the megas appeared we were like what is that is the dinosaur oh, okay is the... maybe i didn't know and i said it. is the shark gonna be on the island <laughs> he's gonna walk around uh jason statham is returning and apparently there's three sharks this time even bigger than the one from the first meg movie there's another shark movie, too, called The Black Demon or something. Oh, an oil rig. Yeah. I've seen this. Yes, I want to watch that, too. <laughs> I love shark movies. Yeah. I really do. I mean, they're, they're you know, when they're done right. Yeah. I don't like, like, Sharknado and shit. That's just dumb. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, the, the true terror of a shark is, is a terror I don't think can be matched. You know? And, 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 yes, Jaws, of course. But, I mean, there are other shark movies that are really good. I love the, the 47 Meters Down films. I love both of them. I think we've talked about this before. Uh, just being trapped in the water with a shark. It's, it's crazy. I mean, <laughs> even, even the open water movie, for all its faults, that's still a terrifying scenario. Yeah. Of not knowing what's below something you can't see. Um, and they could be these huge fucking monsters. Now, Megalodon is a little different, but whatever. Anyway, um, Meg to the Trench, I guess, is coming out. I think it said September. Is that what I saw? <laughs> Shut up, Meg. <laughs> that should be. That'll be the name of the third one. <laughs> Shut up, Meg. The Meg Three. Shut up, Meg. Um, if you have not seen the trailer, you can check it out on our our Facebook page. It's really cool. Yeah, it looks coming like up. a lot of fun, man. It looks good. I'm glad they leaned into the silly aspect. I like having fun stuff. Yeah, it's important to have it. Not quite as silly as Sharknado, but still silly. That's just dumb. Yeah, yeah but but a little silliness is fine. Um, the Meg to the Trench releases in U.S. cinemas. I was wrong. It releases earlier, August fourth. That's Heidi's birthday and Obama's birthday. Well, Obama has something to do that day. In a new interview, Ben Affleck, or rather not an interview, it was a Q&A session after a screening of his new film, Air, which uh, shows... It's on the, Prime. It's on Prime. Is it on Prime already? Sweet. 
shows the rise of Nike in the '90s with Michael Jordan and all that stuff. And the, I know, think it's got Matt Damon in it too. Doesn't got a it? lot of fucking people in it, from what I've seen. But um, during this Q and A, he did reveal uh, some information about why he kind of gave up on the Batman character. Not a lot of it was a big surprise to me. It sounded like he just wasn't feeling it anymore. You know. Ben Affleck, and I mean, it's funny that you mentioned <laughs> that stuff in the beginning. Earlier when we were talking about him and J-Lo. <laughs> we are talking about him and J-Lo. He was trending earlier today because they said J-Lo. And also, you know, I've seen him on Bill Maher. Uh, if Sm- you remember you've the seen him in that episode. meme, smoking that cigarette. Yes, he's just, he's a very emotional and emotionally connected guy. He's carrying a lot of weight. That that's not unfair to say. It really isn't. Um, you know, and, and I I think that he threw himself into that role so much that when it was revealed that it would not happen, it was almost crushing. I mean, that's what I think. Uh, that's what I feel when I read this quote. You know, is that he had this idea. He thought it was the idea. He thought he got the character, which I think he did, frankly. I mean, just just from what he did. But again, even going back and watching like Batman versus Superman and even more so in Justice League, you can tell there is an uneasiness about Ben Affleck and that character. Um, Just kind of a... And that works... Because the Batman character has that sometimes, has that self-doubt of, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing it correctly? Uh, should I be killing the Joker instead of putting him in jail? These are the the conflicts that have made Batman so popular over the years. And I think that he got that. Um, I think he still gets it. I'm, you know, I loved what Matt Reeves did, and it took a lot of balls to do what he did. Sure, um, you know, especially with everybody backing Ben as much as they were in the Snyderverse at the time. But I would have loved to have seen Ben Affleck's Batman film because, with what I saw in Suicide Squad of what he did with that, what I've seen bits and pieces of from the Flash. And the movies that he did, I think he did get that character, but I don't think he ever thought he got it. Maybe. That's what I got from the interview. It's a really long quote, so I'm not going to read the whole fucking thing. Oh, okay. You want to read the whole thing? No, I was going to ask if you were going to read the quote. No, I'm not going to read the whole quote, because it's a long quote. And it's a long interview, but I encourage everybody else to look at it. I'm just telling you my opinion of it when I read it. Yeah. Right? So, uh, anyway, we have that interview on our Facebook page if you want to check it out. And we wish Ben all the best. I know Air is doing very good. So, that's good for news for Ben. You know, because I think he's the... Is, did he direct that or is he just in it? I'm not sure. I think he directed it. I don't know. Moving on. We got to... We got to hurry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, we're tight on time. There is so much news this week, people. And of course, we had the WrestleCon last year, so we missed some stuff. Zack Snyder has come out and said that he feels that audiences, general audience, that is that is, just did not understand what he was trying to achieve with the DC movies. Well, no shit. Yeah, he's correct. <laughs> We still don't know what he's trying to achieve, no. I mean, even going back to Man of Steel, um, I said, this is not going to (laughs) work. I I totally understand what he's trying to do, and I get it, but the, the regular people that don't give a shit, that don't... They have no room for the nuance. Go to Purple Earth every fucking week and, and uh, you know, are diehard fans, they're not going to get it. I and they didn't. My, I want my Marvel spoon-fed hero to me. That's that's exactly, what, uh, exactly my point. And that's pretty much what Zack Snyder is saying. Um, that, you know, people just didn't get it. And he's probably right. They probably didn't get it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if they're wrong for not getting it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's interesting because you, Christian, seem to me to be someone who didn't get it. Um, You're or, right. Or at least... I didn't like it. 
talk about it. We talked about it. I talked about Superman and his dad and Superman, the whole characterization of Superman. The fact that he didn't save his dad. You talk, and and right. just like it seemed like he didn't yeah. want to be Superman. He had no interest in being for truth and justice. He's just like, and then it's like, oh, oh, and he had that scream after he killed Zod. That was terrible, too. He's so conflicted. That's because that's what Snyder was trying to do, was make him alien. I guess. That was where he went wrong. Sure. And that's what we've talked about. You gotta, is that you? when you focus on Superman so much as being a fucking alien, that, that people start to go, man, he's a fucking alien. I don't know if we should. That's true. He is an alien. I that's what Batman it. said. Batman was worried about it. There you go. It. And again, that was why he focused so much on the fact that he was an alien because Snyder knew that the next film was going to be Batman versus Superman and that would be the conflict between them. Yeah, but Lex made the conflict because he's Lex. Well, because he's Lex. He's exactly. sexy Lexi. You can uh, see what Zach has to say at our Facebook page. They got the whole interview there by CBR.com. Um, the Flash director, Andy Mush... How do you say his fucking name? Andy Muschietti. 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 Has uh, sparked some major uh, waves on t- on Instagram he, because he released a drawing yeah. that's particularly menacing, bad. I will add, and bad. Yeah. It's scary looking. Um, of Reverse Flash, Eobard Thawne. The uh, Reverse Flash from the whatever, 35th century. But we don't whatever. think he's in the new Flash movie. But he might be. He may be. Could be the Easter egg. We never know. He posted it on his Instagram page, and fans went nuts because, of course, it refers to the reverse Flash. He is not red. He is yellow. He calls him Flash Doodle. Yeah. I don't know. He, he might just be trying to get people to the theater. I don't think he's going to have a problem getting people to the theater, though. That's just my opinion. Um, you can check out the drawing for yourself and let us know what you think about it. Chris Pratt, James Gunn sat down with, uh, uh, who do they sat down with? I don't know. It was an interesting story, <laughs> though. Very interesting. When he talked Post media. Uh, and they had a discussion about not only Guardians of the Galaxy 3, but Chris Pratt's future in the Marvel Universe. And his casting of everything. Casting I didn't, I didn't know everything. he had his shirt off or his clothes off and his naked picture on Ellen with his underwear on. I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm kind of glad I don't. Um, Apparently, he got in shape in that Zero Dark Thirty movie and was showing pictures to his brother, and his brother said, you're going to be on Ellen. You're wearing Ellen underwear. Why don't you show him the picture of you, how in shape you are on Ellen? And they did that, and apparently that's the photo that they were showing people like, hey, look at this Chris Pratt guy. He could be Star-Lord. He was wearing Ellen underwear? I guess. Apparently, there's Ellen underwear. That's Hmm. your takeaway from that? Ellen has underwear? Yeah. Yeah, it is actually good. It's like, how do you purchase that? I don't. Not that I want to, but um, it's a it's a really, as Christian said, a telling interview uh, because it is kind of the last hurrah. Because Gunn's guys. leaving Marvel, right? Gunn's done with Marvel. He's heading over to DC now. We don't know if that could lead to um, you know Pratt coming over and doing DC stuff. That has been rumored. He said he was going to play Crypto the dog. <laughs> They were joking. So the story, uh, the big takeaway was that Gunn did confirm that in Superman Legacy, Crypto the Super Dog will in fact appear. Um, so that's <laughs> played cool. by Chris Pratt. I don't think he'll be played by Chris Pratt. Um, but that's just something. Again, he said only if you pay him in crypto, though. It goes back to All Star Superman, people. I'm telling you, that's the movie he's making is All Star Superman. Go read it, and you'll know the movie for sure. Anyway, the interview is really long, and they talk about everything from you know first meeting all the way up to and including Superman Legacy, so you can check that out on our Facebook page um, when you're able. I know we give Pratt a hard time, but I always liked him. I mean, I do give him a hard time just because sometimes he is stupid and <laughs> says dumb shit, but he, he is good for the most part. Christian, you were commenting on how cool this fucking video is that we found online of John Bernthal and uh, Thomas Jane doing uh, shooting practice. They're punishing the target range. The Punishers Unite. <laughs> it's a really cool video. Check it out. We have it posted on our Facebook page. As John Bernthal gets ready to enter the role of the Punisher once again in 
Disney Plus's Daredevil Born Again, he had to get out to the shooting range and make sure he can still do the shit, right? Yeah. I've seen to Keanu, help him out. I've seen Keanu Reeves. Keanu do does that like all the that. time yeah. before he does John Wick. And uh, this time, uh, Tom Jane, the Punisher from the um, what's Movie. considered by many to Tale. be the best Punisher property. Um, the other one was Dolph Lundgren. Him. I love. We the talked Dolph about Lundgren. him earlier. I love the Dolph Lundgren one. I don't care. Fight me. I love the Dolph Lundgren Punisher. Fight me. I had it on DVD. Did you really? Yeah. I didn't even have it on DVD. I had it on VHS, but I didn't get the DVD of it. Uh, anyway, you can check out the video on our Facebook page. It's really cool. So uh, they are still working on Venom 3, and now there's a report that the working title could indicate the new villain. I don't know much about this. I mean, I, I read the article, but I don't really know the comic Orwell. or That's the, that's the moniker they're using for it is Orwell. Right. Um, and apparently it refers to Orwell Taylor, who played a key role in the 1992 comic book series Venom Lethal Protector. That's right, and this is uh, it was a very controversial comic because in the book Venom actually smothers his own son to death, and struggling with grief, he recruits some of his child's grieving army colleagues and outfits them with high-powered armor, christening the group the jury, and sends them on a mission to bring Eddie Brock down at the time of writing. Sony and Marvel Studios have yet to address re- whether the connection is valid. That's is, a, that's a stretch. Is it valid? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a stretch. Well, why else would they use the name Orwell? I mean, there could be a number of reasons you why think you so? would use the name All Orwell. Right. But we will see. Uh, you can check out the story on our Facebook page, and we will keep you updated as Venom 3 rolls on. Why don't um, they just call it Venom 3? Why, why do they, they have may, to call it Orwell? Well, I, they always have a working title. I guess. Because <laughs> Venom Three means that Eddie, that fucking that's our working title, Venom Three. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into the semantics. Yeah, I don't want to hear it. Right. I don't want to hear it anyway. <laughs> well, good. You sound like George Carlin over here, just making up words. <laughs> well, Christian, we called it. Uh, Jonathan Majors looking at a year in prison for assault is uh, not having a good year. He should have played Major Pain, dude. <laughs> Jonathan Major Pain. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately that means Marvel is moving forward with recasting Kang the Conqueror so too bad for major pain yeah Um, that's what happens when you're fucking stupid Uh, three counts of third degree assault second degree aggravated harassment three counts of third degree attempted assault and second degree harassment it's a lot of uh, harassment and assaults because he's a fucking idiot Again, uh, Majors has tried many times to clear himself from videos to interviews to all this stuff, talking about what happened. And uh, I like how the quote from like his lawyer says, he'll probably be innocent. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> and it's like, what kind of a lawyer uses the term he'll, probably? He'll probably be innocent. He'll probably, he probably meant to say he'll probably get off. That's probably <laughs> what he meant to say. Um, so we know very little about the upcoming Star Wars film, except that it will revolve around Rey Skywalker, uh, starring the uh, and reestablishing the new Daisy Jedi Whitley. Order. That is the plan, um, according to Kathleen Kennedy, who you know, and y- you know, I mean, I'm going to give up, it a chance. I don't care. This bring, uh, yes, and this brings up a point that I even posted about on Facebook. Regarding the Star Wars films. Not the reality, is it? The yes. Re- when you said reality has a lot of good arguments or whatever. Yes. <laughs> and what Christian's referring to, there was like a it's little a Facebook meme. post he posted. But it, it, it's just, the fa- I don't understand why fans, they ruin these films and then wonder why the filmmakers don't want to make more. I feel like it's not the fans ruining the film, though. Why? They were bad. They were okay. They were good. I I don't. That's your opinion, man. I guess so. I mean, I don't know. I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't know what people were looking for. I'm just saying the fans didn't write the script. I don't. Well, how many scripts would you have and how would it be connected if they did that? I mean. Well, at least you would have them connected somehow. They were connected. No. 
Are there, you saying the new films weren't connected to the old films? No, I'm saying the new three were not connected to each other very well. There wasn't a, a plan. It's like we made one and then we made another one and then, well, uh, you, uh, you know, they had a different guy come in and said, oh, you were going to do this stuff? and No, we're not going to do that stuff. I mean, I think the plan was always to show the end of that trio of characters, Leia, Han, and Luke. That's what I always felt the the plan was for those three films. Yes, to bring in those other young actors to maybe do something later. No, I just meant the plots between the three movies. Like, they don't tie it in together the way New Hope and Return and Empire do. I mean, it's hard to do that. Yeah, it is, especially when you don't have the same directors or the same people coming up with the story. Right. So you agree with me? No, the people who made it did it bad. And the fans have a right to be angry about it. Okay. All right, well. Like you said, your opinion's your opinion. I, I, I really didn't mind him. I really didn't. You know, the stories seem to link for me. I mean, she is a fucking scallywag who kind of gets a fucking force itch. And then in the second movie, she finds out that itch is actually her fucking Jedi powers. Who is, and finds who is, Luke. Who is Snoke? What? Who is Snoke? He is a generated character of the Emperor. It's all been leading up to the Emperor in the third film. Right? I know, but where did he come from? He was in charge Who of the... Who cares? Fl- it's just plot threads that they just drop. Where did fucking Han Solo come from before the first one? Where did fucking Lando Calrissian come from before he was in Cloud City? Why does that matter? Because... You're focusing on the things outside of the film that are left to the person watching it. No, I'm talking about things that we start that don't go anywhere, that waste everybody's time. But you say it doesn't go anywhere. That's where I'm getting confused. Why do you say it didn't go anywhere? Because it didn't. You introduce a character just to kill him off and be like, yeah, so when did it matter? It's kill who off? Who are you uh, talking about he, killing off? Kylo? Sn- Snoke. Oh, Snoke. Again, it was about the manipulation from the Emperor, I think. I think they were looking at the third film. They were looking ahead and said... No. No? No. Okay. I mean, who knows? You never saw Snoke... It's clearly documented. What's clearly documented? Look up... (laughs) If you look... I'm not... We're wasting too much time talking about this. Well, this is the point of the show. Tell me. If you look up people's complaints about the latest star wars Uh a lot of them was that there wasn't like a plan for snoke no for the whole thing as a trilogy that's where you're losing me is with the exception of snoke i don't see how there that didn't make a trilogy well you need to connect as a trilogy no there i don't i can't get into it why because I haven't watched the... I have forgotten the movies. <laughs> They're not movies that I've watched more than once. Really? Yeah. I've watched them a lot. Maybe you should go back and watch them. Good for you, dude. <laughs> go back and take a look. I'm glad you enjoy <laughs> crap. Well, that's your opinion and you're entitled to it. All right, let's keep it moving before I, Christian comes over here and fights me. Turns out that um, The Monkey, Stephen King's uh, short story, is getting made into a film produced by James Wan. And uh, this is great news to me. Monkey Shines. Monkey Shines. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> and I guess that's what the cover of the book is the inspiration for Monkey Shines, I think. I don't know. I was story. trying to Google it, too. I, was I like, don't know. Looks very similar to Monkey Shines on the front. Which is freaky. Well, apparently they say that the, the synopsis is there's a toy monkey that like they find and it, people start dying because of it. Mm. There's a toy. So monkey. not that it's killing them. Yeah, I don't know. But that people are just dying around. It. Maybe it's like mm. a, a possessed toy or something. Sounds like that Simpsons Halloween special. It's not like got it's, the monkey. Paw. It's not like it's about a live monkey that kills people. Oh, we're running short on time. Evil Dead Rise, now owned by fucking Christian, against my knowledge, has become a 
legendary film in the franchise. It has become the highest grossing film globally, passing $100 million worldwide last week. Well deserved. Congratulations to everybody involved. Just goes to show you, once again, you know, I don't mind you remaking or revisioning something as long as you keep the elements that matter and lose the elements that were only good or funny at that time. Yeah. You know, it's because it's like, it's it's a... You made it a horror movie, which you should have. There's right? a lot of new stuff, yeah. but there's a lot of old stuff, too. Right. right. It connects, right? Yeah. And earns that kind of title in the franchise, in my opinion. So, congratulations to all those guys. I know they worked really hard and were probably very nervous about, um, you know, what would happen with it. And I'm just happy it worked out well. All right, let's go ahead and get into our events. Uh, we did have some wrestling stories we were going to talk about with Backlash. It was good. Backlash was Backlash good. Backlash was really good. We saw a lot the of crowd. Great the crowd was incredible. The crowd in Puerto Rico tore the roof off, uh, so they were really good. Uh, saw the return of Carlito and Savio Vega. Um, you know, uh, we saw a great match with Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar. He got bloody. Yeah. Yeah, Brock got Brock got. Uh, Did he have stitches when he was yelling at Cody on Monday? I don't know, man. He had something I on his face. He was know. like, "Look at this face!" Yeah, yeah. He's he, scary, dude. What if he was coming at you like that? I shudder to think. I shudder to think. Six days to go to what? All right. Well, is that for tickets? Tickets go on sale for gotcha. the Huntington Comic and Toy Convention. It is returning August 12th through the 13th at the Mountain Health Arena in Huntington, West Virginia. They have begun announcing guests, and the first one they announced was Eric Estrada from Chips, Christian. Rode the motorcycle, remember? Yeah, I'm trying to think of his name <laughs> from the Eric show. Eric Estrada. No, from the show. Poncho. There you go. Or is that, I think you're right. I think I'm right. Ponch. Ponch, yeah, Ponch. I was like, Tonto? <laughs> yeah, Ponch. No. So it's not Poncho, it's Ponch. There you go. <coughs> poncho. Of course, if you never watch Chips, you're missing out. Poncho Because it is a fun show. It's about highway patrol my motorcycle. Cops. He was also, Eric Estrada was also in C-Lab 2021. <laughs> really? He was the voice of Marco. All right. You get a chance to actually meet the man on... Uh, I'm so excited, I can't even talk August 12th, 13th. August 12th and 13th in Huntington when the Huntington Comic and Toy Convention is coming to town. And, of course, as I mentioned, Christian, we have already put in for some uh, for some press passes there. So cool. hopefully we'll be able to get in there and check it out. Another wrestling show coming your way from ACW Time Warp. It is Res Rassle Palooza. Not Sorry. Wrestling. Yeah, I fucked that up. Rassle Palooza. <laughs> wrestle up palula wrestle up palula putnam county fairgrounds happening on july 11th meet and greet from five to six showtime is six to eight ten dollar fair admission to enter the show and this is happening in eleanor west virginia at the putnam county fairgrounds Look. more info is available if you check out the flyer on looks our like, Facebook Looks like page. some legends are going to be there, too. Al Snow and Shane. Al Snow's going to be there. Ricky Morton. Yeah. Shane Storm's going to be there. Shane Douglas. A lot of local legends, too. Suicide's cool. going to be in the house. Um, ACW's got some great talent. Can't wait. To, uh, might have to go see that show, Christian. Might have to drag you out and take you with me. Take you with me, son. All right. What What? What? What, what, what happened? Where what we go? Happened? There it is. Well, the damn thing's in front of it, so I can't. Oh. Me. Okay. Me. ACW is a busy company, folks. They got another show coming, but uh, a little bit sooner, coming May 25th from the Buffalo Wild Wings in Cross Lanes, West Virginia. We have mentioned this event before. What's ACW stand for? Appalachian Championship Wrestling. Gotcha. Schools Out Cross Lanes is the name of the show. We'll see John Bishop and Marino Tanaglia. Uh, also, Chris Canyon going to be on the ticket. Uh, looks like Christopher Kane's on the ticket. Um, lots of great talent, local talent, going to be there. It is a free event, so they encourage you to come down. Again, going to be at the Cross Lanes Buffalo Wild Wings at 70 Marketplace, Cross Lanes, West Virginia, 25313. Finally, we wanted to mention this. Um, this is something that is important to me anyway. 
Um, what is going on? What the hell? Just close it. I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> branches, domestic violence. Domestic violence shelter is a very um, important business in our area that helps women who are in abusive relationships or battered homes. What about men that are in domestic? Same thing. Bad thing. Okay, I, good. I, I think I think they they either. Help them or offer them guidance, services, where right. to go to help, where, where to go to get help. But they are having a T-shirt drive. You can get a gig zip t. No, I'm just kidding. No, you can get a, not. Had, had they told me, I would have done it. But yeah, you can get. Uh, there are three sponsors that are involved: Orbit's Record Shop, Jewel City Barber Shop, and Bar None, the new bar downtown on the Plaza, Ninth Street, Ninth Street Plaza. $30 for a short sleeve, $35 for a long sleeve. $7 of every purchase goes directly to branches. They have to make the shirt, so you have to pay for that, unfortunately. Um, we encourage everyone, uh, if you're watching our YouTube feed, you can see the flyer here. We have shared the flyer to our Facebook page, so go there, check it out, and scan the QR code. I have already ordered my shirt for Orbits. I picked the Orbits. Yeah. So, um, you know, do this. It's for a good cause for our area. And good luck to Branches with that awesome event. We hope you take advantage. The WWE Sunday Sunner Show. Have you gotten the tickets yet? <laughs> I haven't talked to Jesse God yet. damn it, Chris. He's been working nights. Happening uh, June 18th at the Charleston Coliseum. 5 to 8 p.m. This is a WWE Sunday Sunner Super Show. Uh, we are expected to see Rey Mysterio, oh, Dominic they got, Mysterio. They got some billing Stuff now, on the huh? card. We got Seth freaking Rollins in the house. We're going to see the OC. Oh, your Imperium's going to be there, dude. Uh, the ring general. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's probably going to be a pretty good show. Uh, tickets are available at the Charleston Coliseum uh, Civic Center box office. Also coming to the Charleston Coliseum, get this, Christian, Ringo Starr and his all-star band. The Beatle. Your mom's under the impression tickets are $500 for two tickets. Well, they're <laughs> close to that with fees and everything. You're not wrong. Uh, the most expensive drive. ones are one hundred and forty-five seventy-five before fees. This show is coming up October 9th at the Charleston Coliseum, 7.30 p.m. Of course, Ringo Starr, one of the Beatles, and a pretty good show from what I hear. It's Ringo, Ringo. Ringo. As Christian mentioned, ticket prices vary, but uh, range from $55 all the way up to $145 to check out. When was that? That iconic show. That's in in October. October October 9th is when that show October. All right, and that is all I've got. Woo! Woo! Not on the show today, Woo! Christian. Yeah, without having to dissect Star Wars. Gosh. <laughs> That's why we have the show, so we can talk about this. I don't shit. want to dissect Star Wars, though. It makes me too sad. You know, uh, uh, I will say to our listeners that of all... I, I get this way with Batman, so I get it, you know? <laughs> Christian has a true hardcore passion for Star Wars. I mean, everything you always collected with Star Wars, everything you always put up with Star Wars. I read a lot of Star Wars. You read Star Wars books. You bought the games. I mean, so I, I get it. You you have a very strong emotional connection to those original films. <laughs> but, you know, my only point that I was making was that they weren't as fucking terrible as they're made out to be. Well, I don't know. It's like, remember when we used to think the prequels are bad, and then these came out, and it's like, geez, they made the prequels look good. Again, <laughs> I didn't think the prequels were that bad. <clears throat> I guess I'm a fucking minority, you know? I don't know, man. You need higher standards when I it comes guess to so. sci-fi. I guess so. <laughs> I'll work on that. <laughs> All right, folks, that is the show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget, check us out on social media. Help out the show. I'm starting to get sad, people. Like, subscribe. I'm starting to get sad, Let Christian. us know. We need some growth. We need some growth. I'm starting to get sad. Help yeah. us. Um, check it out, Geek Zip Podcast, on any social media platform. That's where you'll find us. Podomatic.com, P-O-D-O-M-A-T-I-C.com, forward slash Geek Zip Podcast. Donate to the show via PayPal or become a Patriot subscriber for exclusive content. We're Christian, asking for your help you got to help else? spread the word about the Geek Zip podcast. We need your help, people. 
We hashtag, can't do it ourselves. Hashtag save the Geek Zip podcast. How about that? <laughs> there you go. Jensen, where you at, buddy? We need you on this one. You got anything else, Christian? No. All no. right. Just how good Evil Dead was. Dick. All right, folks. Thank you for joining us for Christian. This is Ryan Zip from the Zip Cave saying have a great week, and thank you for listening. <laughs>